Okay, I'm joined by Gaina Faye and also uh, Kay Miller. Nice to meet you. Nice so, um, so it's so exciting that Band of Gold is back. So for anyone who hadn't seen it before when it was on in the 90s, what, how could you describe it before? Oh, well, I'd describe it as um, uh, it's a kind of whodunit. It's got a gritty element to it. It's funny. Mm. It's life-affirming. And it looks at a, a group of sex workers, yeah. a, a, a young woman that gets herself into debt, how she's led into uh, prostitution, really. Mm. And would you say those topics are still relevant for the audience of today and for this in 2020? Absolutely they are. Yeah. I mean, everyone's got a red light area. I'm sure you have it here in Southampton. Yeah. You know, what was it? Is it St Mary's around here or was it St Mary's? I can't remember. <laughs> That's where our station used to be. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know, but, uh, but I, you, know, yeah. I, I, you know, it's the oldest profession in the world. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to go away. Mm. But if anything, I think it's worse today than it was back in the 90s mm. and more relevant today mm. with austerity and, you know, universal credit. And, you know, people don't know how to manage. You know, you've got a family and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, what, it raises the question, what would you do yeah. if your family were struggling mm. and, you know, you owed money or you couldn't put food on the table to feed your kids, what would you do, you know? Mm. So, yeah, it's more relevant yeah, today. Definitely, yeah. Mm. And so it was such a big hit back in the 90s. So what kind of, was it, was it a risk to kind of bring it back into stage, into stage form and revisit it um, in case it didn't match the quality needs? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, it was a risk. Um, and, you know, you just don't know. But I workshopped it twice before ever mm. I made the decision to do it because I was so nervous of it. Yeah. Thinking, you know, it might not stand up today, or mm. the characters might not transfer to other actors. Yeah. And the the workshops were both positive, so I made a decision then that yes, I was going to do it. But really, until the opening night, I still wasn't absolutely hundred percent convinced. It was only the audience that told me that it was that they loved it, and they, you know, they they told me in <laughs> by by their applause, by their laughter, mm. by their you know, by coming back again. Yeah. So they'd see it once, they'd book to come and see it again. Mm. So that, for me, and the reviews, of course, were, were, were wonderful. And that, you know, I didn't expect that. It's really good. And how would you... Um, or w was it difficult at all to choose the cast for the new, um, for the new stage show? Um, how was uh, that process? Yeah, they had to embody the characters. So yeah. for Gaynor, it was quite easy for me because I'd seen her do two workshops mm. um, and I knew she had the qualities of Rose. So, yeah. you know... It was a no-brainer to ask her to do it. Mm. Uh, Laurie was Scottish, yeah. um, and so it was very near Barbara Dixon. Yeah. You know, and uh, and uh, Anita, um, she was she's got the same similar qualities that Anita has. So, and then of course finding you know Emma Osmond, who's a brand new actress actually from Leeds, yeah. who um, who kind of embodied the character of Carol. But you know, big shoes to to fill in terms of you know Kathy Tyson played it. And yeah. Where Gaynor was concerned, it was uh, Geraldine James that played Rose, and yeah. Barbara Dixon, as we all know, played Anita. And uh, for you, Gaynor, yeah. you, did you watch it when I it did. was in the 90s? Yeah, I, I mean, it was incredible, and was constantly being asked, I can't, I can't believe your mum can write something like that. I was like, I know, <laughs> I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, because it was so groundbreaking yeah. at the time, you mm. know, and um, yeah, it just the subject matter was had never been tackled before, especially right. not from the women's point of view. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was fantastic that my mum was making, you know, new waves and opening the, opening the floodgates for many more mm. dramas that came through after that. Yeah. Um, so I was really proud then and just, you know, gutted that I wasn't in it. Um, so this time when she it is came... She now. <laughs> this time when it came about and uh, they were, we were talking about doing the theatre version and kind of helped selecting some scenes to yeah. make it into the theatre mm. version um, and then when they did the first workshop I was like oh yeah I'm, I'm available if you want me to come in and play mm. one of the characters yeah. and really the character that I was most you know um, suited to was Rose and I love her because she's so she's got so many layers to her mm. and she's got this really hard shell um, and there's this little soft there's a soft centre in there but you have to dig deep to find it um, because she's the matriarch of the women yeah. She looks after them. She yeah. takes a little financial cut, yeah. <laughs> but she looks after them. And that's what comes across essentially in the whole show is how the camaraderie between the women yeah. and the fact that they're, they're there for each other, they have each other's backs, mm -hmm. and they may fight between them, but anybody else comes in and tries to fight with them or, you know, do hurt them. Mm -hmm. 
they're there for each other. And they feel an enormous amount of guilt and responsibility for each other if anything happens. Mm. So there's all that that goes on in the show, as well as love, as well as crime. There's so many uh, facets and elements to the show. I think that's what's really um, been fantastic. The audience have got, so they've got the TV yeah. show mm. and a whole lot more. Yeah. And for people who didn't see the TV show, they've got mm. this extremely relevant piece of theatre, yeah. which is funny, sad, um, shocking, yeah. and um, yeah, and there's karaoke thrown yeah. into the mix, <laughs> <laughs> as with every K melodrama, there's always yeah. something <laughs> quirky in yeah. there. Yeah, and the composer actually, who composed the original music, the, the original um, uh, TV music, yeah. allowed us to use his music, so it's That's Hal Linders from Dire Straits, yeah. has allowed us, so, the, so his music is infused all the way through through the piece, so it's it, it's lovely, and then we've got the karaoke that, that Gaynor just mentioned, mm. the, the songs that, from that which yeah. elevate it really, yeah, and make it you know, it, it's it, it's lovely because it recreates the era. Yeah, so it seems like there's something for uh, fans of the show before, and also new people like new generation that haven't heard of it before. Yeah. So it seems like there's good kind of both generations coming together. To yeah, well, there was quite a lot of new people, yeah. uh, young people in Leeds. Yeah people that you, you know I said to one young lad I went oh, were you alive <laughs> you know, when it was on mm. and and he went um he said well I was a baby he said but I really wanted to come and see what it was all about I'd heard mm. about it my mum used to rave about it yeah I wanted to see what it was and then there was you know film students that came uh, you know tv st media people yeah. that came because it was a bit of a phenomenon you know in its day attracting over 15 million people yeah uh, overnight. Mm. There's so also people who want to come and see, like the likes of Kieran Richardson, who are in Hollyoaks, yeah. and you know, there's uh, Sasha Parkinson who's been in lots of different TV mm. shows. Yeah. So there's a there's a young cast as well uh, who people mm. want to come and see what mm. they can do on on the stage, yeah. and they're amazing. And what was it like working with them? Is it uh, just brilliant? Just watching, you know, like I know Sasha and Kieran, neither of them have done theatre before. Yeah. And just watching them take it on and love it. I mean, they really love it. Yeah. And they're brilliant. They're captivating, honestly. Mm -hmm. I watch them and just go, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're brilliant on television. But then they, they you wouldn't recognise yeah. either of them. You no. it's, it's, Kieran is unrecognisable yeah. from mm -hmm. his role in the They kind of go, I heard Kieran Richardson was in this, go, yeah, you watched him. You know, they, they really don't know because he's so, he transcends himself. You know, he, mm. he, he, he absolutely encapsulates that character. And for a, t a TV actor that's, you know, who's mm. not done stage before, I think that's remarkable. And then there's Andrew Dunn, who's yeah. in Dinner Ladies. So yeah. you've got lots of com com comedy as well. And Steve Garty, who plays Curly, who's mm. a stand-up comic. Yeah. So there's people from all walks of, um, you know, Media. Yeah, our profession. Yeah, yeah. Of our profession, and yeah. all coming together, and all admiring each other's performances mm -hmm. because we're all coming from a different angle, yeah. you know. And even though people have come from a different angle, they they still translate really well from TV yeah. uh, onto the stage, and I think that helps them. Yeah, well. definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's mm -hmm. why I think it's pulling in different audiences, and I yeah. think, you know, it's great the fact that there's young people, there's older people, there's there's all sorts of walks of life coming into the. People who don't normally go to the theatre as well. It's really yeah. important yeah. to get people who don't yeah, normally go audience. to the theatre mm. to come into the theatre and actually such a wonderful genre. Yeah, somebody said to me, uh, you know, I've only ever been to the theatre twice. Mm. I won't see a pantomime in this. <laughs> and you kind of go, yeah. wow. And they go, oh, I'll go and see that. I'm going to go see the next show that's on. Mm. So keep theatre alive. Yeah, yeah keep <laughs> theatre alive. It's important. It's, it's, it's a different experience to television. Yeah. It's so wonderful, live theatre. Mm. We have to keep it, you know, alive and healthy, yeah, you know. And uh, you know, we want this theatre full. We want Southampton full. Yeah. That's what we want. Mm. That lovely, beautiful auditorium. Uh, so obviously, uh, this is happening at the moment. But is there any other plans for Band of Gold beyond the uh, theatre adaptation? I don't know yet. Um, I think what we'll do is let it have its run, yeah. and then we'll sit it down and kind of go analyse it and go what's. You know what's next? Do we put it in the draw, mm -hmm. um, or do we, you know, or do we try that in the West End, yeah. or do we try another tour, or perhaps a film, for, a film mm. for uh, of Band of Gold? Because, you know, that's what's happened to Fat Friends. Yeah. Fat Friends was a television series, and it became a stage show, mm -hmm. musical, and now film people are interested in making it into a feature film. So, you know, it's there's life. That's the beauty of. 
of, of theatre. It gives it a new life, it really. Does, yeah. And would you, uh, if you don't take it to a film, would you like to use the same cast in this one? To oh, obviously, I would. Yeah, that's what I would love to do. But you know, we'll, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for people, and if someone's at home now thinking about coming to see it, what would you say to them to kind of give them that push and an encouragement? Oh, well, I would say go out and buy a ticket. It's going to be a great night out. Mm-hmm. It's going to make you think a lot. Uh, and laugh a lot. Laugh a lot. Think a lot. I'm going to be told to cry. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe a little weep because mm-hmm. I was sat in the auditorium with people that were kind of sniffing a bit and yeah. laughing a lot and mm-hmm. engrossed. You're going to be told the big story with the beginning, middle, and an end, and you know you're going to be shocked as well. Yeah, there are elements that are sh- quite shocking within it, mm-hmm. in a good way. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, Depends what you mean by shock, but I said what I mean by shock, I suppose. But yeah, it's not going to be an, an ordinary night. It's going to be something that you remember for a very long time. Definitely, and also tell us about the set changes as well, because I find I find yes. that's quite interesting. Yeah. So the set changes are, um, are, are very interesting. <laughs> Annual done by the actors. I have to tell you, every single member of the cast mm. are involved. You know that. So actors who have never been on a stage before in their entire life yeah. are not only acting, they mm. they help change the scene. Yeah. So it's it's a very extraordinary set mm. uh, and it takes every single member of the cast and crew to pull it off, mm. to make it feel seamless yeah. and to make it feel like um, it's a flow, yeah. flowing from one scene into another. Cause that, you know what I, I'm not very good at is people running on with a chair and plonking, you know, mm. I'm not very good at that. Um, you know, I want things to happen sort of in a flow, in, in a kind of seamless way. Yeah. So is, it, so is this real kind of ensemble piece? Yes, piece then? Like absolutely. Together? Yeah. yeah, there is no stars kind of going, I'm not going to move that. Mm. There's none of that. Every single person works their socks off to make it, mm. to, ma- to make the whole piece work. And that must make it much more fun to yeah. be a part of, because you, that, like you said, there's no real stars, it's all together and it's... Yeah, it, there's no rivalry going on. That's right. I yeah. mean, it's, we all have to be there for each other. We're all moving sets so that somebody yeah. else can start the scene. Mm-hmm. So it really brings you together. I mean, to be honest with you, we've been really lucky anyway. Everybody gets on really well. Yeah. Everybody. Um, and but I think being involved in scene changes and knowing that when you bring that on, it brings the other actor on who can actually start the scene. Yeah. You have to have a trust. Mm, you know. Exactly. And um, did you know anyone actually before you joined? Yeah, I knew yeah. pretty much everybody oh. from the s- more of a social scene, yeah. um, and also I, I work for the charity When You Wish Upon a Star, and so I know sh- Sasha from that because she's mm. a pe- I'm a patron and so is she of that charity. So there's various people that I know from award ceremonies, and people that I know from charities, and then there's mm. people who have worked with before. So yeah, we all kind of know each other, which was nice. And I did the workshop with um, just me and Steve Garty, who plays Curly. We yeah. did the workshop together. Mm. Um, originally nice. twice we both did it together so I know him from that mm. but it's great and yeah. really really good cast mm. and also just out of interest uh, with the stage version did you help your mum uh, with any of the writing or the um, development of it I kind of helped thinking of the scenes and, mm. and what you know the kind of development of the story from yeah. the series one and um, mm. yeah but that's kind of it really well, it was quite. It was kind of quite vital in a way for, for me to look and kind of go, "What is the story that I want to tell?" Yeah. And so we we together we searched through and sifted through season, the first season to look and kind of go, "What are the key scenes?" Mm. And we put them in some sort of order. Yeah. Uh, the order changed about a little bit, obviously, and I had to craft it. But to be able to see that there was a, st- you know, that I could yeah. get a story into a stage show was kind of quite a crucial stage, mm. wasn't it? Really. Mm. And obviously in rehearsal we all kind of, I mean the, the script was there but mm. we were yeah. all kind of involved in yeah. making, bringing it yeah. off the page. I encourage people to participate, yeah. you're not just an actor, mm. you're a creative source, yeah. you know, you're a cre- you know, and, and I encourage people to, to in, you know, to, to, to input really yeah. and to give any ideas that they think, you know, we'll try it out, mm. you know, we'll try it out and sometimes it can be a brilliant idea, sometimes we can't make it work, you yeah. know, or we you know, there was one of the actors <laughs> came up with a cracking line. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was funny, but unfortunately, yeah. the the the, um, the audiences didn't quite get it. Oh. So after a couple of 
times I said that, that that's gone <laughs> you know that that line's gone yeah um, but we tried it you know we, we tried it and, and that's the beauty of theatre again yeah. you know you can try things out where you can't on television right. because you know you, you write it for TV they film it it's on that's it gone theatre you can change theater, it last minute you can be honing you can yeah. be tweaking you can be taking that out putting this in you can shift this to the end you can mm. shift it to the beginning you can add a whole you know yeah. you think about bits that I did you know I added a whole strand at the end of one bit mm. you know after the second workshop yeah and you're talking about the humour just now so was that important then to kind of bring that in so you've got the hearts yeah. and the dreams and then the humour to I, th I, th I honestly think that if people go to the theatre they don't want people bashing on my head going oh, yeah, yeah. this is about sex well you know that's not you know they want a story they want yeah. to they want to laugh mm. they you know people to go to the theatre they maybe got babysitters they may, they've paid for the ticket to go yeah. see it, they've said taking time out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and so I just think that they want everything. I'm greedy for everything yeah. as, a, as an audience. You know, when I go to the theatre, I expect to laugh, I expect to be engrossed, I expect mm -hmm. to be told a story. All those things, that's what I want. So I want to give that yeah. to my audience, really. Yeah. Yeah. Humour's massively important. Mm -hmm. Humour is a tool that a dramatist should use yeah. to get through. So you can say all sorts of things if you can make your audience laugh as well, yeah, you know they will forgive you this and that and the other, or they will they will open their hearts to you and to the characters mm. if you if you can give them some humour. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be a belly laugh. It doesn't need to be a great big guffaw. Just humorous, you know. Yeah. I mean, there are some big laughs. Mm. Don't get me wrong, but you know, the fact that there's humour in it, yeah, in the very fabric of it, they love. And actually, the women themselves, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, they're they don't take themselves too seriously. They themselves are, you know, funny. They can tell you a story, yeah. and you'll be crying one minute, and then you'll be laughing out loud the next. Yeah. And they're talking about these women. How did it? It must have felt really empowering in a way to play the kind of strong, feisty woman. How how did that feel? Well, I'm a strong, feisty woman. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fantastic. You know, obviously, I'm a real woman's woman, and yes. um, so I'm I'm really behind women, strong women, mm. and the fact that these women are survivors means a, a hell of a lot. You know, it's fantastic mm. that, and the fact that they're there for each other. They are, you know, they're doing what they're doing, but they've got each other's backs. That's really important. Yeah. But it's it's so good to play um, strong, hard woman yeah. and she's quite far removed from me as a person mm. but you know the essence of her as being you know a woman's woman is is there which is great to play absolutely and I, I expect young audiences who'll be watching young women will find that quite good to see as well I think um, so hope yeah. so okay well thank you so much oh, for pleasure. Uh, talking to me and thank I, you I can't wait to go and see it myself oh great I can't wait for you to see it, it. <laughs>